If you think Nintendo is nice, you're wrong. Because it seems like every week, Nintendo is involved in controversy, whether it's shutting down fan-made projects, emulators, or even YouTubers' videos, like mine one time. But thankfully for them, today I will fix eight of Nintendo's biggest controversies, beginning with YouTubers. You see, Nintendo and YouTubers don't have quite the best relationship possible. Back in the day, if you were a Nintendo YouTuber showing gameplay, Nintendo used to take a portion of your ad revenue, take a portion of your money, your income. And nowadays, they've stopped doing that, but the controversy here is Nintendo taking down YouTube videos that show Nintendo mods. If you hack Animal Crossing, they might take you down. That's kind of what I did. Back in 2020, when I was 13 years old, I posted an Animal Animal Crossing duplication glitch video, and Nintendo took it down. But you also see, like, Zelda mod videos get taken down. It's a messy situation. So now, as Nintendo, how do we make this right? How do we make Nintendo perfect in this aspect? So when I put this hat on, I become Nintendo CEO. What do we do here? As Nintendo CEO, I think we should keep all Nintendo modding videos up on YouTube. You know, Nintendo takes those down because, oh, they modded their Switch piracy. People are going to play our games illegally. And there's always going to be people who play Nintendo games illegally. But when people show modded Nintendo gameplay, it sells the game for you. People see Zelda mods. They want to buy Zelda. It sells. Nintendo CEO M. Swizzle declares that you keep those videos up. Next controversial topic. Should Nintendo Switch Online be free? Nintendo's paid online membership, similar to Xboxes and Playstations, you gotta pay to play online nowadays. And it's controversial because Nintendo back in the day never had you do this. If you look at the Wii U, the 3DS, the DS, the Wii, you didn't have to pay a dime. Well, you had to pay for internet, but aside from that. And you know what? People are gonna wanna say Switch Online should be free, but I actually feel different. Nintendo CEO decision? I think Switch Online should remain paid. Because I'll tell you this, although online was free during the Wii era and the DS and the Wii U and the 3DS, did you have all the things that Switch Online had? Switch Online, the base membership, gives you access to NES games, SNES games, Game Boy games. You didn't have any of that. You have voice chat as well. No one uses it, but you have it. Whereas if online was free, we would have online for free, but we wouldn't have any of those things on Switch, and if we did, you would probably have to pay for them instead, so it makes it all one good bundle. I think Switch Online should stay paid. Next is a topic that I feel very upset about. Nintendo versus fan-made projects. Let me say what I mean here. Recently, there was a Woohoo Island Explorer fan-made project, where if you download this file, you can walk around the Wii Sports Resort Woohoo Island and just do whatever you wanted to. Swim, walk, jump, anything. That is so cool. And Nintendo has not taken that down yet, but they time and time again show that they love to take exactly that kind of thing down and let nobody play those kinds of games. And if you make a fan game that harms Nintendo's reputation, they it might take you down because somebody might think it's official. But it doesn't stop there because Nintendo has also taken down tournaments like Smash Bros tournaments. They, they shut them down for no reason. Well, you know, sometimes there actually is a reason. But if you look at this one example of Nintendo shutting down a Smash Bros tournament that was completely for charity, they got a ton of backlash after that, and then they quickly reversed their decision. It just shows how eager they are to actually take down these tournaments. Nintendo and fans, I guess, don't really get a Long. But what should we do if we are Nintendo? This is my Nintendo CEO hat. I don't care. Nintendo CEO hat. What do we do here? I think this really has to be done on a case by case basis. Fan made projects are cool, but if you make the wrong one, I can justify Nintendo taking you down. For example, the Woohoo Island Explorer that I talked about, that's totally innocent. That's fine. If you make a naughty Mario oh, game, no. yeah, you might be taken down. And if you're making a tournament, I'd say do it for charity or else you'll also get taken down. Unfortunate, but next topic. We're looking at a prime example. In just a few months after recording, Donkey Kong Country Returns HD is releasing on the Switch for $60. This game's already been released twice, one on the Wii, one on the 3DS, 
and this is the most that it has ever costed ever. Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, $60 for a game that was previously as low as $20. This is criminal. Listen, listen, things are just wrong here. I'm not paying 60 bucks for a game that I own twice. I'll say this, there's a difference between remasters and remakes. A remaster, to put it very simply, is the same game, but just HDified. A remake is this. Here's Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door for the GameCube and for the Switch. You can tell it is quote unquote remade. It's very different. I think that remasters or HDifications of games should be no more than $40. Listen, I'm no game developer, but uh, $60 for a little HDification? I'm aware that there's more than that that goes into it, but come on. For remakes, though, if it's as good of a game as, you know, the example, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, I think that you can charge 60 bucks. Because that game, even though it came out in the 2000s, if you drop it in 2024 like they did, that's new to some people. It's also a really good game, so you have that going for it too. So, remasters, $40. Remakes, $60. Please never 70. Oh, sorry guys, I was looking in my Nintendo VR headset. Yes, should Nintendo focus more on VR? This is our next topic. It's controversial. People say yes, some people say no. I don't want to play Mario Odyssey in VR. It'd be rather scary. There's Goombas creeping up on you from all different angles. And this is probably the simplest controversial topic to go ahead and uh, shut down. No, I never want Nintendo to focus on VR. And someone's going to go, Max, what do you think about Nintendo Labo? They did a little VR kit. I actually bought that right when it came out back in the day. And it was nice to put together, it was very creative, but at the end of the day, that wasn't Nintendo fully tapping into their VR skills. It was Nintendo Labo, these little one-off games that you play for an hour and then you're done. And they did expand that VR capability for games like Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, and I believe even Zelda Breath of the Wild, but those didn't hit for me. I cannot imagine a world where Nintendo focuses on VR. If they focus on VR, it better be after Xbox, Sony, Everyone's doing VR. It has to be more mainstream before I can get behind Nintendo making a Nintendo VR. Please never. I didn't want to talk about this. I didn't want to give Nintendo any ideas, but will Nintendo ever stop making physical games or should they ever stop? All digital Nintendo is terrifying. I mean, I don't have like the world's largest Switch collection, but look back there, I have a couple physical Switch games. And over on that side as well, right where my finger is, look, I have a decent amount, maybe. I buy all my games physically nowadays. And if Nintendo ever went all digital, you know, it'd be a very smart business move. Most physical versus digital sales comparisons have digital winning by nearly 90, 95%, if not more than that. And of course, it'll cost more to make physical games than it will to make just digital games. It's two different services. For physical games, you walk up to a store and you buy it, a real life box with a real cartridge. And for a digital sale, you just hit a button and it zaps to your console. But similar to the VR, if I'm Nintendo CEO, I would never want to go fully digital until my competitors do. Listen, whoever does it first is gonna receive some backlash. And if you follow the crowd, you might get a little bit less of that backlash. If little Jimmy announces that his birthday party's canceled because of the rain, and his friend Antonio had a birthday party the same day and he canceled it too, Antonio would get less backlash. And so Nintendo CEO says Nintendo will not stop making physical games until their competitors stop doing that as well. So that's my pick. Oh, and then finally, probably the most controversial topic that we could talk about for 96 hours. Should we let Nintendo Switch emulators stay alive and also ROM sites stay alive? If you don't know, a Switch emulator will let you play Nintendo Switch games, even ones that aren't out yet, but leak online like Mario Party Jamboree did. You can play those games on a computer or a Steam Deck. Anywhere except for the Switch, it lets you play those games elsewhere. And ROM sites are sites that give you Switch games effectively for free, which is illegal. So if you're Nintendo, 
Do you let these things live on? Apparently you should because whenever Nintendo takes down an emulator or a ROM site, they get bashed online. Heck, even I do on my Nintendo podcast. You should check it out. But I always come back to this very analogy whenever I talk about Nintendo taking down emulators or ROM sites. You behind the screen, shake my hand. You are now one of the biggest YouTubers on the platform. People are watching your content. They love it. You're getting paid billions of dollars. It's fantastic. But let's say all of a sudden somebody makes a random website called, insert your YouTube name here, videosforfree.com. And everybody was watching your YouTube videos, some that weren't even out yet, for absolutely free and you're not getting paid a dime. And actually, they're making money off the site. What would you do? Would you take down, insert your YouTube name here, videosforfree.com? Or would you let it be alive because it's just cool and the fans love it. Of course, if you prioritize money like Nintendo should, they're a business, you take that site down. So when you put it like that, it makes Nintendo seem a lot more in the right to go after these sites. When it comes to emulation, there's a fine line. If you're an emulator that teaches people how to get free Switch games or does something like that, like the Yuzu emulator did that got taken down earlier this year, then maybe they'll strike you down. But for example, the Dolphin, Wii, and GameCube emulator has been thriving, surviving, doing amazing stuff for so many years now, and they seem fine. So, as Nintendo CEO, my last day here, ROM sites, I could see them being taken down, but emulation is legal. We'll only take you down if you cross the line. The line of teaching people how to play free Nintendo games and making us no money. Oh snap, I just got an email from Nintendo saying I got fired as CEO for making too many wrong decisions. Well, that must mean that the video here is over. If you enjoyed this video and enjoy Nintendo suing people, here's a video on where people Nintendo sued are now. It's pretty cool. Subscribe to the main channel here and the podcast channel right here. Nintendo news every single week on that channel. I'll see you all next time. Adios.